Welcome back. Former Home Secretary Suala Braverman was dismissed by the Prime Minister last year after she criticised the police for being soft on pro-Palestinian protesters. She's since been pressuring the government for tougher measures to stop the boats. Well, our political editor, Christopher Hope, has exclusively sat down with Suella Braverman for her first TV interview since leaving office in October of last year. Suella Braverman, why won't this Rwanda bill stop the boats? Well, Christopher, whilst there are some welcome elements in this third piece of legislation that the government has put through to stop the boats, unfortunately, it is fundamentally fatally flawed for two big reasons. Firstly, it doesn't preclude individual claimants, that's illegal migrants who have come here on the boats, from legally challenging through the courts our powers to detain or to remove them. So what we'll see is wide scale and repetitive individual claims being made through the courts time and time again only having the effect of delaying their removal to Rwanda. Secondly, it doesn't stop the scenario that we all saw in June 2022, whereby the plane was grounded on the tarmac because a judge in the European Court of Human Rights at the 11th hour, pursuant to an opaque process where the UK government wasn't even represented, blocked the, fr the flight from taking off. And there's nothing in this bill that will prevent that from happening again. So the changes you're backing with Robert Jerick, your former colleague in the Home <coughs> Office, and others too, will stop that happen? Is that right? These changes yes. you're offering? Yes. Uh, we've engaged with the government over several weeks and we've now tabled several amendments in the name uh, largely of Robert Jenrick but also of Sir Bill Cash to fix the bill and we're putting them forward in the spirit of constructive engagement with the government. They will dramatically reduce the ability of people to thwart their removal through the courts and they will emphasise and clarify that these pyjama injunctions, these uh, Rule 39 orders from the European Court are not binding and they will empower a minister, Secretary of State uh, for the Home Department, to direct that these flights can take off. Because what we want to see, if we want to stop the boats, is regular uh, flights taking off to Rwanda with large numbers of passengers. You know, a token flight with a handful of people on them on it is not going to stop the boats. We need an effective deterrent. People are coming over in their thousands on the small boats. They need to know that if they get here, they will be detained, they will be put on a plane and they will be removed to Rwanda. So we need uh, a large powers and we need to reduce the ability of these illegal migrants to block their removal. The PM wants bright ideas. He told <coughs> voters in Accrington on Monday this week that is he try looking at any of your, your measures? Have you talk, been heard that the PM is looking at your, the ideas you're proposing? Well, I would respectfully say that these are some bright ideas that we've put forward. I mean, I have uh, personally some expertise uh, in this subject. I advocated for many of these measures 12 months ago when I was Home Secretary. Uh, the Prime Minister refused to accept them then. Uh, he's come uh, some way forward. He's now introduced a third bill, as I say, with some of those measures. But unfortunately, it's lacking in the essential things that is going to make this bill work, that are, is going to stop the boat. So uh, we've got some bright ideas. We've engaged constructively. We want this bill to work. It currently does not. And to present, pretend otherwise, I'm afraid, does a disservice to the British public. It amounts to a betrayal to the British public. I want to stop the boats. I want this government to stop the boats. It's got a chance to do that, and that's why I'm urging the Prime Minister to accept our amendments so that we can work together, fix this bill and stop the boats. There are votes next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, in the committee stage in the Commons, and then there's a third reading on the whole bill. If the government doesn't accept your amendments or the <laughs> amendments don't go through, what happens at that third reading vote, potentially on Wednesday? What will you do? Well, listen, I am, I'm only going to support a bill that works. As currently drafted, this bill does not work. And if there are no improvements to it, I will have to vote against it, I'm afraid. I'm sent to Parliament to vote for things, to be for things or to be against them, not to sit on the fence. And I owe it to my constituents, I owe it to the British people to be transparent and honest about the situation that we're in. It's absolutely essential 
that we deliver on this pledge to stop the votes. How many of the other colleagues of yours, the 54 or so, have signed many of these amendments will vote against it at third reading if it's not amended? Listen, I've been working extensively over the last few weeks with many, many colleagues, and I'm very encouraged by their support. We've got over 50 uh, Conservative MPs who have now publicly put their names to these amendments, who share our concerns, who want to fix the bill. This is a significant number of backbenchers who feel very strongly, and we will all be discussing this matter intensively over the next few days. Because you could defeat the government and help Labour defeat the government and potentially bring the government down next week. Well, listen, what my objective is, is to deliver a, boat, uh, a bill. What my objective is, is to deliver a bill that works. And it's far better to defeat this bill because it doesn't work and start again with a new bill that will work, then proceed on a false premise, then proceed on a basis that amounts to uh, uh, something that won't stop the votes. We, we may all feel a temporary sense of achievement by passing a bill, but in a few months' time, when we see that plane grounded on the tarmac, when we're failing to remove people to Rwanda, when we are clogged up in the courts, it will be very, very disappointing. And people will ask us, rightly, what did you do to try and avoid that catastrophe? That's what I'm trying to do now. I'm trying to avoid a catastrophe of failing to deliver on this pledge. Do other ministers still in government share your concerns and might some have to resign next week? Well, personally speaking, I have been very uh, concerned by the high number of ministers to whom I have spoken who have grave reservations about this bill. Oh, dozens. Um, I actually haven't spoken to many ministers who genuinely believe that this bill is going to work. Privately, uh, under their breath, they say to me, uh, we know this bill won't work. We, we know that the, we're exposed and we're vulnerable to the European court in this bill. We know that this bill will only open the floodgates to litigation and claims and lawyers bringing repetitive claims. But, you know, we want to continue and we you know so so I think that <clears throat> there's a very widespread level of concern privately amongst ministers. So some may have to resign to back to back Listen, to go with their this conscience. Is, this is you know every minister uh, has to grapple with many many conflicting factors and it's a very personal decision. I'm someone who yes. resigned from government because I couldn't support Theresa May's Brexit betrayal uh, and the terms of her withdrawal agreement. It takes courage, it takes principle to resign and give up the trappings of office, which are quite seductive. But it does have an impact because ultimately, if you take a stand on principle, it means something. And that's why I applaud my colleague, Robert Jenrick, who, uh, who did resign on principle because he had profound disagreements with this policy and this bill. Do you understand, though, the, the bind that the PM is in, Rishi Sunak? He's got to try and keep the left of his party right, uh, happy, the right happy. He's gone as far as he can on both sides. He's, he's teetering along a kind of ledge, isn't he, to get this bill through Parliament. And he's hoping it will work. He says it will work in the first flight take off in May. Do you understand that the, 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 they've gone as far as they can, number 10? They can't go any further. No, I disagree with that, fundamentally. Um, firstly, hoping it will work is wholly insufficient right now. We're at the end of the parliamentary term. This is the third act of parliament that we will be passing to stop the votes. Pledges have been made, slogans have been trumpeted, promises have been made time and time again, and the British people are sick and tired of broken promises. We can't afford to get it wrong. And, uh, and so hope, wishful thinking, there's no, there's no more time for wishful thinking when it comes to stopping the boats. We're, we're facing a general election and if we don't get it right and if we don't stop the boats, the British people are not going to forgive us. Critics will say it's all about leadership. Do you want to be leader? Listen, there's no leadership election. I'm not running for leader. But there is a general election and I want us to win that general election. And at the moment, on the current polling and according to public opinion, about half of my colleagues are set to lose their seats. I want them to win their seats, and we're going to win our seats if we pass a bill that works. But even a bill which might work might save some seats. But unfortunately, this bill won't work. It's absolutely clear. The government's own lawyers themselves have admitted that it's highly likely that this bill 
won't work. Uh, the, you know, our legal advice has made it clear that this bill won't work. I've spoken to practising lawyers in this field who have made it very clear that this bill is faulty. The PM says it will, he will ignore any foreign courts trying to in intervene in the work <coughs> of the UK. Do you not believe him when he says that? I'm afraid the position within government and the prevailing legal view is that a ruling from the Strasbourg court is binding on UK ministers. And that's the other profound issue that's raised by this bill. It's about who governs Britain. Is it the UK Parliament and our democratically elected government, who, which has a mandate to stop the boats, or is it some foreign court, a foreign judge and a foreign jurisdiction which has very little accountability and uh, legitimacy, I would say. I mean, that's why my personal view is that we need to leave the European Court of Human Rights you want, and leave that the European be the Convention. You your mind. But personally, I think we have to start having this debate in a lively way because our membership of the European Court is precisely what is stymieing policy making and is stopping us from delivering, delivering on, on, on our pledge to control our borders. Once again, it's all about sovereignty, isn't it, this, vote, this debate? It, we haven't did it through this meaningful vote of, uh, that happened uh, se several years ago over Brexit. It's about Brexit again, isn't it? So it's a sovereignty matter next week. It's about taking back control. Yes, there are real parallels with Brexit. And, you know, I think that it's... <laughs> You know, it, there are parallels again with the meaningful vote. There was lots of voices, uh, voices off at the time of meaningful vote, uh, telling Tory MPs, "Don't, don't rebel, don't speak out, because you, if you disagree with the terms of the withdrawal agreement, Brino, Brexit in name only." Do you remember that? Don't grandstand, they said. You know, I'm so proud that 28 of us took a stance of courage and principle, and. Objective to the, objected to the terms of the withdrawal agreement, despite huge pressures to do otherwise. Had we not done so, that faulty uh, and betrayal Brexit would have gone through and we may well have been in a very different situation where is Brexit would have been this, Is all this worth potentially bringing down your government next week? Because if, if the government defeated on Wednesday, there might be a vote of no conference by Labour and we could face an early election by mistake. This is not about bringing down the government. This is about delivering a bill that works and stopping the boats. You know, I'm here because I believe vividly in things. I'm here because I believe passionately in delivering for the British people. They are fed up with the boats. They are fed up with broken promises. This is our last chance to get it right. And woe betide a government that fails the British people again. Well, Sir Redmond, thank you for joining us today on GB News. Thank you. Thank you.